See now. But how would the four of us start with this? Everything will start with an hypothesis. H, the event that the hypothesis is true. What is the meaning that is true? Oh, it's true that the accused committed the murder. Then there will be alternative in the court of law. You know, it's either you are guilty or you are innocent. So the H, C, me, event that the hypothesis is false. Please, I need you to pay attention to this. He is the event that there is new information, which is evidence. I told you, we always believe on something. Okay, our mind can never be empty. But the moment there's a new information, then there's possibility that what we believe may change. Now, uh, if I want to talk about BSO in odd form, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, posterior in odd, prior in odd, and likelihood in odd. Now, I'm going to start from this. What is that? When I say odd, means what let us weigh it let us weigh let us weigh it okay this is the ratio of the probability that the alternative that the hypothesis is true to the probability that it is not true you know if this is one that's that is going to be 50 50 right this is the odd i mean this is a, a prior hard does that make sense the odd of prior now when you take a look at this the other one that is the odd of the likelihood Okay, we take a look at this guy. That is the order of the likelihood. Let me explain that. The probability that there is evidence given the hypothesis is true. The probability there's evidence, you know, let me tell you this. There can be evidence, hypothesis may be true. There can be evidence, hypothesis may not be true. Does that make sense? Okay, now combining this now will give us the order of posterior. Please pay attention. Okay, this is now the odd of the posterior. Okay, the odd of the posterior will mean, the, if you take a look at it, the probability that a hypothesis is true given the evidence divided by the probability that hypothesis is not true given the evidence. So I just wanted to take note of this. Now I need you to pay attention now. I need you to pay attention now. Now I'm going to quickly move here. Uh, I'm going to quickly move to the, I want us to apply that odd uh, base uh, in art form uh, right now. Now, take a look at this. I told you this case. This was a celebrated case of the century. The old world had about this case in 1994 because uh, this OJ Simpson was a former football star. He was well known. So in the, in the, in the night of 19, June 19, uh, June 12, 1994, you know, uh, they found the corpse of uh, the Nico, Nico Brown and um, uh, Godman because uh, Nico Brown has used to be the, uh, the former wife, the ex-wife of Simpson, and he had, she had a new boyfriend, okay? The two of them were murdered, okay? And the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Simpson normally abused uh, his wife, he was actually named the culprit. But let me tell you this. This is what the uh, accused, the, the, the lawyer that was defending Simpson said. Is the lawyer defending the accused tried to belittle the relevance of this file by stating that only 0.1% of men who physically abuse their wife actually end up murdering them. Okay, this statistic is available, but this very statistic is a prior. It sh we shouldn't believe on prior. We need evidence too. And that is the reason why Reverend Thomas Bayes, okay, is trying to say, even though we're going to have a prior knowledge, but uh, we can't just totally believe on a prior knowledge because of the fact that we got different in ideology, we could have different prior belief. We need it, that needs to be updated. With new information. Okay, now take a look at that. Now, the story continues. However, in 1992, 4,936 women were murdered in the United States, of which roughly 1,430 were murdered by their ex husband or boyfriends. Okay, now when you take a look at this, uh, this statistics, if I want to find the probability of guilty. Okay, given 
that a man abuse his wife is going to be divided by that. And that's going to be small too. Now, in addition, assuming that a woman who has been murdered by someone other than her husband had the chance of being abused by her husband equal to 0 0.05, and a woman who has been murdered by her husband had the chance of being uh, abused by her husband equal to 0 0.5. Now, you know the question here? Was the fact that O.J. Simpson had previously physically abused his wife irrelevant to the case? Because the defense counsel was saying that was irrelevant. And do you know what we want to do right now? We want to use a base theorem in art form to prove to the world that the fact that an husband abused his wife is relevant to the case. Okay? Now, uh, this is what we're going to do. Please pay attention. If you don't understand, ask question. Okay? Pay attention. This is it. We're going to define our event. If you want, what do we want to do? We want to prove that if an husband abused his wife, okay, and the wife eventually died, okay, the husband can be charged. That doesn't mean he's going to be found guilty. He could be found guilty or not. But what we are trying to say, what we want to argue statistically right now, that is a prime suspect. Does that make sense? Okay, now we're going to define G as event that the husband is guilty of the murder of his wife. Of course, when G exists, then G complement also exists. The G complement is not guilty. Does that make sense? Okay. The G here is acting like hypothesis that I talk about the other time. Okay. Because that's going to be an hypothet hypothetical statement. Hence, the event that the wife has been murdered because the defense counsel did not even consider the fact that somebody was murdered. Okay. It was because at that time in Los Angeles, uh, it, uh, you know, it shifted the, the, the defense counsel shifted the uh, the thinking of people from the fact that somebody was murdered to the integrity of LAPD. Because at that time, they believed the LAPD was too, uh, you know, harsh on a particular race. Okay, E, the event that the husband has physically abused wife in the past. Please pay attention. I want to explain this. Take a look at this. The probability of G giving M, that is the probability that the husband is guilty, given that the wife has been murdered. Does that make sense? And where do we get these statistics? This is available in 1992. Out of 4,936 women that were murdered in the United States, okay, 1,430 were actually murdered by their ex-husband or boyfriend. And that was why we find that ratio. Now, well, before moving forward, do you now understand how I got that ratio from the statistics available? It's 0 0.2 now is very small, right? That's 29%, right? Now, from this, we can also find this. You remember what I was showing you the other time? You remember what I was showing you on Monday, if, if I know the probability of G giving M, the probability of G giving M is the same thing as one minus probability of G complement giving M. Do you see M and M? Do you see G and that? Okay, that was what we did here. So what are we trying to find here? The probability that husband is not guilty, given that uh, the wife has been murdered. That is 0 0.71. The lawyer, the defense uh, lawyer was actually using this because this is, uh, you know, this is very, very high and the other one is small. But you know what? Do you know what the defense ca uh, counsel did not consider? He did not consider the evidence. Now, and the fact that somebody was murdered. Now, take a look at this. It's 0 0.5. The probability of the evidence given that husband is guilty and wife was murdered. That was 0.5. That is what is given here. Do you see here? A woman who has been murdered by her husband had the chance of being abused by her husband. This is 0 0.5. That statistic is available, and that's why we're using it. We're using it here. Okay? We're using it here. And the same way 
that we compute this, okay, if I have the probability of E giving G and M, beauty, mother, then I can also have one minus the probability. So if you take a look at what I have here of E giving G complement mother, now what happened in the, in the two case? Somebody is murdered, somebody is murdered. But what is the difference? Okay, I need you to uh, pay attention uh, right now. Oh, sorry, no, 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 that's a different one. That's a different one. Now, here, we have another statistic available. The probability of the evidence, given the husband is not guilty, but the, 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 the wife is murdered, was 0 0.05. So this was actually given here, okay? This was actually given here. You see this? A woman who has been murdered by someone other than her husband had the chance of being abused by an husband is equal to 0 0.05. The husband can abuse a wife, but the husband is not responsible. Maybe it's a, and that will call out 0 0.05, which is this guy here. This is the evidence is available. Husband is not guilty. That's why you see guilty, a G compliment, but somebody was murdered that happened that. Now, if I want to apply the, uh, you know, the uh, base odd, Take a look at this. That is the posterior hood. The probability that husband is guilty, given that the wife is murdered and there is evidence, divided by the probability that husband is not guilty, the wife is murdered, there's evidence. And take a look at this. And this. If you plug in all those values, we got 4.08. By the time we solve for that value at the end of the day, what happened here? That gives you a high probability. And this probability, the fact that Simpson physically abused his wife is relevant to the case. Therefore, he needs to be charged. But let me tell you, we're going to 